Hey kids, nice to see you again. Uh, today we're going to be discussing the subject of the foundation of the Jehovah's Witness organization. And when I was writing my book, I had to do a lot of research on the foundation. So I'm going to share some of that research with you. I went to the JW org site and, uh, and I just went to the Bible. So uh, I'll, share, I'll share that with you right now. Okay, here we are. So the first thing we're going to look at in the scriptures is foundation. It's important, like we had said, to look at the foundation. The first scripture is from Corinthians. No one can lay a foundation other than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is our model for the foundation. Matthew 7, 24 to 27 reads, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be likened to a wise man who built his house on rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew, beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like, a, and doesn't do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. So we're going to look at that to see what kind of foundation the Jehovah's Witness organization is built upon. And the last scripture there is, and I tell you, you are Peter, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Well, you might think that's a little rough or whatever, but uh, what, is, what does the Jehovah's Witness Bible say? It says the same thing. I just pulled it up here. This is the New World Translation, same scripture. And also I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock mass I will build my congregation, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of the heavens. And whatever you may bind on earth will be the things bound in the heavens. And whatever you may loose on earth will be the things loosed in the heavens. So here the foundation, according to the Bible, is was given to Peter. When Jesus, uh, if you read the whole story here, uh, they were coming to take Jesus. And so Jesus gave him this little talk and uh, gave him the keys. So that's why in some religions you hear them called St. Peter. It's the foundation of the church, of the original church right here. Uh, Jesus gave it to him right here. And it's in the Jehovah's Witness Bible and everywhere. This is not new stuff. But the foundation is from Christ and it was given to Peter when Christ died on earth. So that's it for that scripture. We're going to close that one. The next, uh, th that's it for that. The next one we're going to go to is a JW Org website. And uh, we pulled up some information on Judge Rutherford. 100 years ago, 1919. So you can read this on your own time, get a gist of what the Watchtower says. And I even looked at some of the videos online, and it's quite obvious that they adore Rutherford. He's a, he's a person that uh, started, his, started the religion. And here it even talks about this first talk he gave when he got out of prison, and it was free, no collection, and there was a lot of people that were interested we're going to talk about why the people are were interested. This was right after he got out of jail. And uh, uh, we go on to talk uh, down further here. I like this little part here. I pulled up the scriptures here. So this is uh, the brothers in Brooklyn, New York. They had a truck truckload of the Golden Age. And if you remember at that time, they this is how they, uh, they did it. It was like a newspaper company. And uh, they had a big following going. Uh, uh, they had something like 700,000 signatures when he was in prison. So they had a big following, almost a million people at that time when uh, Russell left them. And so Rutherford had a, had a huge opportunity to, to take over. And he was out uh, with these guys for a bit, teaching them some of his door-to-door -door sales tricks that he had learned. So I looked up all these scriptures. Here's what it says. By the end of 1919, Jehovah's people were reorganized and energized. Additionally, several important prophecies involving the last days had been fulfilled. The testing and refinement of God's people foretold at Malachi 3, 1 to 4 was complete. Jehovah's people had been released from their symbolic captivity to Babylon the Great. And Jesus had appointed the faithful and discreet slave. Now the Bible students were ready for the work that Jehovah had in store for them. I just find it's just uh, amazing how these guys can come out of prison and then just start throwing out these statements. But if you have a lot of money and you have wealth and you have the printing factories that Russell had all set up, um, none of these scriptures, by the way, I looked them all up. None of them make sense. It's all very abstract. And uh, to say that uh, by the end of 1919, Jehovah's people were the chosen ones. So I find this very abstract. It was a sales pitch, sales game. And we'll get into that further. But this is what the Jehovah's Witnesses are teaching you. 
So then they teach you, um, talk about adoration. Well, he just loved these big assemblies and um, he loved printing his stuff. So right up until 1942, the first article in every watchtower was printed by his own pen. He penned it. And if any of the scripters uh, disagreed, he'd just fire them. He'd get rid of them, get them out of the organization. But here's what you're going to find. You'll just, they go on and talk about uh, these assemblies, these big assemblies. And then this, this here uh, finished mystery book, this caused all their issues. Uh, July 17th, uh, this new book was released, 850,000 copies. Well, this is what put them in jail, this book. And this book is pretty much like the the uh, the book we just discussed the other day, um, the Revelation's Grand Climax. It's uh, similar to that, really putting down the Catholic organization, putting down uh, wars and a lot of things then. And it was seditious. It went completely against the government. So we're going to look at that. Um, and that was the basis of the organization, a seditious book put, put out to condemn other religions, mainly the Catholic and, and the government system of things. So that's the Watchtower shows these books. They show them as Rutherford was a hero. Uh, they make, they have, if you look at the video, there's a whole, short of making a statue of Rutherford, they've done everything else. And in the Revelation Grand Climax book, uh, the Seven Trumpets is all about Rutherford's uh, achievements, his assemblies, just like this here. This is one of the assembly and they, they call it a trumpet. So it's quite interesting how the Jehovah's Witnesses just made the Bible about them. Rutherford did that. Not the Jehovah's Witnesses, a Rutherford thing. And he designed it. So now, what I noticed is Jehovah's Witnesses are using Wikipedia. I noticed a society. I went online. And so this, the nice thing about Wikipedia is uh, the society, Jehovah's Witnesses, can edit it. So we know it's going to be, for, it's going to be pretty accurate. Um, because they can edit it. So I learned a lot from this and I'm just, you can learn a lot yourself. And I, I recommend you read this whole thing to learn all about Judge Rutherford, but I'm just going to, it talks about this finished mystery book, what put him in prison and uh, the whole bit there. Um, the, he made a lot of administration changes. He ran the show. Uh, he was the legal guy and uh, he knew how to make things happen. So I just want to come down to uh, here. To get a to get a better picture and you got to read it's important when you're looking at the foundation of something is you look at the character and the attitudes of the person so you're going to see not a lot of this on the watch chart because they're, they're obviously not going to exonerate it but you know he had a couple of cadillacs he uh, he was he loved his alcohol but let's just read here according to wills rutherford emerged from prison in 1919 bitter against the world and the collusion he saw between the clergy and the military that had secured his imprisonment. So he was really upset, angry, and mad. And he devised the religion in prison under, under the mental concept of being mad and angry at the Catholics and the government system of things. So he was, a he was used as a judge once, but uh, he, he had litigation skills, and he knew how to litigate the Bible or litigate, take it, and to make it so that anybody could believe it and make books out of it. He had all these printing presses. So soon after his release, he coined the term Satan's organization to, to refer to this supposed conspiracy. In the Watchtower articles, Rutherford was similarly scathing towards big business, politics, and the League of Nations. Rogerson describes Rutherford's attitude toward the clergy, his avowed enemies, as the unadulterated hatred. His attacks on clergymen, particularly those of the Catholic Church, from the late 20s were strong enough to attract a ban on his broadcasts by the NBC radio network, which condemned his radio attacks upon the organization of the clergy. So you can look at all this stuff. This is out of the yearbook. He also applied criticizing terms to those who had described deserted Watchtower ranks, calling them the evil servant. That was the uh, Russell's crew. By 1927, he banned all the books. He urged readers to view with contempt anyone who had openly rebelled against God's order or commandments and also described elective elders of the 1930s who refused to submit Watchtower administration changes as despicable. So uh, he was quite the character when you look and get a, get a feel for who this man was. So Rutherford's books and magazines revealed a strong view on the proper place of women in the church and society. In a 1931 book, he linked the post 1919 rise of women's movement 
that encouraged equality of sexes with sat satanic influence and claimed the customs of men tipping their hats to women or standing when a woman approached was a scheme of the devil to turn men from God and in indicated a effeminate streak into men who practiced the custom. Mother's Day. Uh, he, he got rid of the Mother's Day custom, was similarly described as part of a plan to turn people away from God. That's what he said. In 1938, he re urged his adherents to delay marriage and childbearing after and until Armageddon was over, which Wills claimed prompted a strong community bias among witnesses against marriage. Though, and we've seen that. Uh, we've seen that within our own family and what was going on in the congregations. So those who did not marry, says Wills, were considered to be weak in faith. And that's, that's how Rutherford put it. A 1941 convention in Missouri, he quoted uh, Rudy Hard Kipling's description of women as rag and bones and the hank of hair. So uh, this is kind of how Rutherford viewed women. And uh, uh, just to give you a little better idea, and you can do your own research on this because we can go forever on it and get over our 10 minutes. But uh, he built, this is interesting, this personal life. He built this mansion in San Diego and he had mansions all over in Germany and various places. And uh, he had uh, basically a harem down there. He had seven houses around there. He had this maid servant that followed him around. He left his wife when he became president, just left her, and she remarried eventually. It says right here, Rutherford married uh, Malcolm Fetzer, whatever, and their only child, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> the couple separated after Joseph Rutherford became president of the Watchtower Society. And it says she, she remarried an active member and uh, whatever. But uh, this guy became president uh, he became, he was very angry when he came out in 1970. He was just miserable. And uh, but they he he knew uh, he had two sides of him. He had the dark wolf side. So if you look at my stories on the dark wolf, the white wolf. We all have a dark wolf, white wolf. Well, his dark wolf would come out at home against his wife, and he was very abusive, and she just had to leave him. But he had two Cadillacs. Um, you know, he, he the guy was. Um, it, he was an alcoholic as well. Um, let me see. You guys do your reading. But the guy was an alcoholic. He had uh, li uh, liquor transmitted from the Canadian Bethel to uh, to the U.S. Bethel. And the Canadians uh, um, challenged him on, on some of what he was doing. And I think he just got rid of whoever challenged him. Uh, I'm looking for it here. It was in here. But you guys do your own reading on Rutherford, on his personal life. Really get an idea on the foundation and who he is. This is this guy is who he is. Now, when I was doing my research, he uh, came from a poor farming family. And uh, he um, his dad was kind of mean or whatever. But uh, he took out a loan at 16 and he actually put himself through law school, but he supported himself through encyclo encyclopedia sales. And uh, he was very good at the encyclopedia sales. And later on, uh, he used that, uh, some, of, some of his training there to uh, in, the, in the Watch Tower organization. So you can really get a whole picture of who Rutherford is. And uh, he was very powerful, uh, a very good speaker, very knowledgeable. And uh, that's why everyone followed him. They would, they like their ears being tickled. So what we're going to now do is go and look at, just look at what the Bible says. So I went to the Bible and just plugged in rulers. Um, remember we covered this the other day, but we're going to cover it again. Titus says, remind them to be submissive to rulers and authority, to be obedient, ready for every good work. Speak evil of no one. Oh, the rulers. Rutherford did do that to the rulers. The Catholic judge that put him in prison, he was really angry at him. Let, uh, Romans says, let every person be subjection, subject to governing authorities, for there's no authority except from God. We didn't see uh, Jesus' early disciples going in and condemning the Romans at that time. We didn't see any of it. All, the whole Bible talks about uh, being submissive to those governments, those authorities, because they're there for a reason. But Rutherford went completely against that when he started uh, transmitting seditious information. So of course he's gonna be put into to jail. Romans says that if you go against the government, you're, those who resist will incur judgment. And that's what happened to him. He got put into jail and encouraged judgment. And then he built a religion upon his experience. 
So um, no one knows the date. So here it is. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of the heavens, nor the Son, but only the Father. Well, we know that. There's so many other scriptures all the way through the Bible. No one knows the date. But yet, Russell and Rutherford kept pumping out dates, end time dates. Even to sit there and calculate the Gentiles and, uh, yeah, it's going to happen in the generation of 1914. That's the same thing. It's figuring out these dates. Only the Father knows. Not even Jesus was given that information whether he has it now or, or not, or whether, whatever. But when this was written, not even Jesus had that information. Only only God, only Jehovah. So when you see guys pumping out false dates like 1914, 1925, and you do your research, Watchtower is not going to show you this, but go to Wikipedia. They can challenge it, but Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. If it's true, Wikipedia keeps it. Watchtower so far hasn't been able to challenge any of this stuff. And so therefore... It's, it's as good as true. It's more true than what's in their stuff. They're candy coating it and making Rutherford look like a hero. So here it is. Concerning the day and hour, no one knows. So we should walk away from the religion at that point once we know they put out end times dates. And they're still pushing it today. The end of the end of the end of the times of the end of the end of we're there at the end. Like the guy just couldn't quit talk about the end of the end. Like, come on. No one knows the date. It might be a thousand years. It might be a hundred years. You know, when Rutherford started this whole game in 1914, there's a world war. Today there's wars. Everyone gets anxious and thinks it's the end. Everything's the end. No one knows the date. Why are we even playing around with this stuff? I'm moving on. Um, false prophets. This leads to the next thing. These guys that are pumping out dates, what are they? For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. And that's how I view Rutherford, putting out all these false dates, Russell too, all these guys, and just condemning, condemning and condemning and making the Catholic Church look like they're Satan. So some, you know, here it is. These guys put out these false dates. The Catholics don't. No other religion puts out false dates but JWs, but, the, but this organization. And Matthew here says, and many false prophets will arise and mislead many. Like the Bible is full of information. Just plug it in. False prophets. It tells us what they look like. And I'll tell you what, the JW organization stinks false prophets. So here, here's the end of it. Then you say, well, why are they so big? Why did they have 8.5 million? Bottom line, they like, people like their ears tickled. The Bible tells us this. It says, for the time is coming. When people will not endure sound teachings, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And they will turn away from listening to truth, which, by the way, is Jesus, truth. Remember, it's not the religion, and wander off into myths. So once Rutherford twisted the word truth, he twisted everything. He made himself truth. Jesus is no longer truth. He hijacked that. And then he could tickle people's ears. Well, people... A lot of people don't read even at that time back in those days. Some people did, some people didn't. But uh, this guy was a powerful speaker. He'd get up and he'd, he'd get in front and he could talk and he could carry a lecture. He'd do a 45-minute prayer. He'd re-lecture the whole audience with, through his prayer. And then uh, for, until his death, he wouldn't allow anybody to edit his work. And he pumped out something like 20, 20 or 30 books in his life. And he inculcated this hatred of uh, Catholics and governments into the whole organization. But yet here, what does the Bible say about governments? It tells us to, to listen to them. Uh, no one knows the date. Uh, false prophets, yes, they're all around us. They pump up these false dates <clears throat> and ears tickle. So 8.5 million, I was one, I guess I wanted my ears tickled. I was in it for 30 years. Uh, it sounded good. But here it is, Peter. Likewise, husbands live your live with your wives in an understanding way. Did Rutherford do that? No, he was angry and abusive. And it says showing honor to women as the weaker vessel. Did Rutherford do that? Not at all. Since they are heirs with you of, of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. Did Jesus do that? Yes, yes, and yes. Jesus honored the women. He, the, he first appeared to the women. Rutherford uh, treated women in a very, very harsh manner. That's the foundation of this church. It's the foundation of it. And uh, it says here in Timothy, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teachings, 
but have the itching ears and they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. So back in World War I, 1914, what is it? Uh, there's a lot of people that didn't want to support the countries, didn't want to listen to the governments. Government said, hey, we got a war to fight. We, we need support. Rutherford didn't want to go to war. He, he thought he, he was cunning and uh, he taught a group and all those that uh, wanted their ears tickled came to his seminars. They all went to a seminar. So on earth, people want their ears tickled. And, uh, and this is what's happening with, with these teachings, these false teachings. So who is Joseph Rutherford? He's, he's the leader of the Jehovah's Witness cult, just like uh, Joseph Smith is the leader of the Mormon cult. Like these are all cult religions. And you could go on and on at Seventh Day Adventist. They're all cult religions, all followers of men. They love the adoration, the big crowds. Uh, there was a lot of big bucks and pumping out this, this truckload of magazines. They sold this stuff. They did not do this stuff for free. So kids, do your own research. This is the foundation of the Jehovah's Witness organization. So that's about all I have to show you on the computer for now. We'll go to bed. Well, there you have it. So when you look at the foundation of anything, you can tell how solid it's built upon. And when we look at the foundation of the Jehovah's Witness religion, we can see that it was built upon Rutherford. And even to this day, uh, in all the books, he's, he's very much uh, adorized. And uh, the people really speak highly of Rutherford. But once you get the whole story, you realize he was just a person. And uh, he was actually maybe uh, not the person you thought he was. So do your own research. But what I found with Rutherford, it really opened my eyes to the foundation of the religion and, and what I was a part of for 30 years. So uh, you, you do what you want with the information, but until next time, live your life with love. Bye for now.